The Impala and the Corvette are considered cousins by GM. The first time the Impala name was ever used was on a Corvette show car in 1956. But in 1958, the Impala and Vette went in different directions. The Corvette went racing while Ed Cole, Chevrolet's chief designer, envisioned the Impala as a prestige that every American could reach. And it was. In 65, the Impala sold over one million units, a record that still stands today. We've got more than enough sheet metal to keep us busy for a long time on the 64 Impala. No time to waste. The chassis had a lot of uh, factory sludge and uh, nasty welds and stuff, so we wanted to grind it down. Frames are pure function. There's no fashion involved. They're nothing but engineering. Yet their layout and design has evolved radically over the years. They can be almost as unique as the cars that ride on top of them. Frame designers have tried everything from two simple angle iron rails to subframe unibodies, boxed rails, X frames, outside rails, and even tubular frames. No design has ever been completely discarded either. The basic frame layout of early Model Ts is still used on some vehicles today. While Dan was working on the chassis, I was taking the material left over from the core panel on the driver's side. That way we can uh, fit the new core panel. Right now we have the luxury of having the Impala in sections. Spreading components around no matter how large they are will be key to meeting the deadline imposed on the team. Some of the chassis components uh, from the factory are only stitch welded in some areas. So we're grinding out some of the welds and going to re-weld it. In 1964, the Impala was never intended to get the kind of torque we'll be putting on the ground. We're going to cut out the rear shock uh, mounts because they're known to break off on regular occasion, especially with when you have something that travels as much as an air ride suspension, you need to have a good sturdy shock uh, shock mount. So we're going to replace those with some fabricated mounts. An airbag suspension won't just create travel, it'll create a lot of stress on the frame. Slamming this car down with a flick of a switch will put pressure on components GM never imagined. Fortunately, Impalas are one of the most modified suspensions on the street. Plenty of lessons have been learned, some the hard way. Once both sides were prepped, ready to receive the quarter panels, and we wanted to uh, throw the full quarters on that we got through Classic Industries. Um, they actually went on, in my opinion, surprisingly well for aftermarket quarter panels. They do have their minor imperfections, just like everybody's does. Rear quarters on a 64 are so large you could use them as privacy fencing. Getting this tin right is no small chore. Close is the best you can hope for until it's on the car. The quarter panels were held in place with uh, clicos. The, you drill an eighth inch hole and uh, through both metals you put the clico in and it grabs hold of the ball. We'll need to move and flex this quarter panel before it's fit in its final position. The clicos mean their position but not permanent. Spotting at this phase would be a rookie move. Both quarters will need to shift around once the trunk lid, hinges, and taillight housings are set into position. The quarter is just the icing. We still have to bake the cake that'll hold it in place and in line. I would say that our timeline, original timeline, is pretty much completely shot, but nothing ever works, you know, 100% according to plan. There's a bit more metal work involved than I had originally anticipated, and just making sure that everything fits perfect always just takes a, a tremendous amount of time. Pessimism may be filling the shop right now, but you never know. The team may catch a break in the right direction. A big car doesn't always mean big problems. Next few weeks is going to give a whole new meaning to the term heavy metal on this Impala.